really big shiners this time. Look at that. Even bigger. Welcome back to M Hood Fishing, everybody. So I'm gonna fish this canal this afternoon with this bait that I just caught. I'm gonna try shiners. I've never fished with dead shiners before. Unfortunately, I, I couldn't keep them alive. I didn't bring in the bucket, but they're big enough to cut in half or three pieces. So I'm gonna try that. Got some panfish too. And there's some other things that I brought. I wanna try some different things here. We're gonna go for catfish and we're, we're maybe, maybe we'll, we'll put out a gar line. Now I have fished this spot before and it looks like I'm giving it another try because I did not like it the first time I fished it. I wasn't really planning on coming here, but it was something as an option because see this barge right here? There's just more and more and more barges as you go down. All the other spots that I usually fish on this stretch have a barge in front of it besides this one this is an old bulkhead sometimes they uh, tie barges off to it but there are no barges today so i guess we're gonna see if i like this spot tonight well we have plenty of time to sit on it so <laughs> let's see what we can do we're gonna try a bunch of different things and one of them or all of them are gonna work out something's got to work out come on let's get right into this here's my little bag of bait i think this is just enough to do this session tonight it is almost six let's start with a golden shiner i think it's a golden shiner could be an american shiner <clears throat> like i said it is late it is about almost six o'clock sorry let me angle that a little different for you and then we're gonna cut a body section slippery little things there's two catfish rods and here's two more right in front of us these are the first that we're going to put out yeah i brought four rods down here okay my usual setup here 50 pound mono is the leader tonight we have 40 pound as the main line it's mono i always just tie up 50 pound leaders just so i can use them when i go to the river or wherever there's a lot of gar here all right, that's on an eight dot. Make sure the scales are off. Three ounces of lead because there's a there can be current in this canal. Over here, it's the same setup, but the head is going on that. I'm gonna do this head piece a little different. We're gonna come through the bottom lip and try to pierce through the head without piercing through my hand. There we go. Let's see if that. Uh, I don't feel that. I'm not feeling it. I don't think that's going to be good. We're going to go through here. We'll do that. That should stay on. Put out this body piece first. As you notice, or you may not have noticed, I did not cut the gut pocket off this. Put this right out in front of me. Not really far right now. Just want to kind of see where we're going to pick up a bite. As you can see, we're in front of, uh, or we're across the way from a pumping station. There's another one on our side down the way from us. This bait, we're gonna do something totally different. We're gonna put it out as far as we can. I'm using an alpha reel on this rod right here. It's a blue runner rod. Here, let me give you a close up of its gear ratio. I use this at smaller places, sometimes the river. It's got 40 pound mono on it, high vis, which is a good style of line to use if you're gonna do a lot of night fishing. It's just easy to see, especially if you have a headlamp or in any kind of uh, ambient light, like street lights or whatever. You can see where your line is. Let me get these bags of leaders out of the way. Get straight down to the bottom, to the business here. We want one of these. I'm going to drop shot with this rod. So I put my hook on like this. I'm gonna make sure I have enough of a tag in for my lead. I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna 
do myself up a single uni. See how I make this loop and I pinch it in my fingers, then I run it up against the main line above the hook. I'm gonna wrap it. I'm gonna do three wraps on this. Wrapping around the main line and going through that loop. Let's do one more wrap. And I'm gonna wet that with some saliva. Pull it tight. I'm gonna cinch it down to my hook. See that hook is wrong. See how it's at an angle and it's kind of sideways. Make sure that you have your knot straight and tight. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring our tag in through the eye of the hook. Sometimes you end up doing this wrong. You just need to pull it out and go through the other side. I'll show you what we want here. This is what we want. We want the hook to be in this position. The lead is gonna be right here where my fingers are and the hook needs to be like this. Now you can catch fish when you have it wrong, but you're gonna catch more fish when you have it right. So I've got the lead on there. I need to tie it. Looks like I have it kind of short. I made it just a hair longer, but I'm doing a new improved clinch knot. So it's gonna end up longer than it appears when I cinch that knot down. Go through that bottom loop, then go through that top loop. Get it wet with your mouth. Cinch it down. Perfect. So we got about six inches below the hook. That'll put that bait right in the fish's face. Just a little bit left in case of slippage. Just in case. I don't expect any. So never drop these on the ground. Always put them in your tackle box or your tote, whatever you brought your stuff in. The first thing I'm going to do with this one eye is a night crawler. I can do other things later if I feel the need. But there's a reason why I'm doing a drop shot. I got to get the bait on there before I tell you. With this drop shot, I want to just drop it straight down. It's not real deep right there. It's maybe four feet. When I get my fourth rod tied up, I'll walk around as I watch these rods and try in different places, see if we pick anything up. But for the moment, I'm just gonna kind of swing it out just a little bit ahead of the bulkhead and put it on this bank stick here that looks like a Halloween decoration. Still haven't had a bite yet, but I'm gonna sit here as long as it takes till I feel like I've caught enough here, even if it is just one fish, but hopefully it won't be. This rig is gonna be a slip rig, but first we gotta put us a knot on the line, a line knot. I was fussing with trying to get the bead on. Yeah, why did I, I know. I was hoping for something better. But yeah, that's what it is. Finally got this slip rig sorted out I'm sorry i'm getting preoccupied with one of the rods i'm not sure if i just had a bite or if it's tension from the change in the current because we got a a tug i mean i'm sorry a riverboat pushing a barge the one that was parked right down the way from us that may have been it if you look out here if you look at the water See how it looks all crazy right now? Everything is getting pushed this way. I think these dudes over here are checking for jug lines, if you can see them in that flat boat over there. So I finally got the uh, slip rig sorted out. This is a four-aught kale, small piece of panfish. I was using this for gar. This is one of my gar rods. It's an 80-pound braid on a coastal tough. We're not gonna put this out too far, but we're gonna wait for the torrent to calm down. It looks like a raging river right now. Oh! I was watching one rod, another rod goes off. Something just hit this night crawler, but it's not there. Getting a bite on this rod. It's kind of crazy when you're doing four rods by yourself. Oh, 
Oh! Something just grabbed the float line and yanked it. But the float's not under. Oh, but it's still pulling on it. There, it's going under. It must have been a gar. I should have just opened my bail for him. I, I was hoping it was something else. Let's make sure we still have bait. We still have bait. I've probably seen a thousand bites like this on this session. Let's see if he gets serious. You may notice that there's only two rods here. I'm at that point, I'm getting frustrated. Whatever this is, he's picked up the bait and took it towards the river. I'm tempted to pull the rod out of its holder and see if we have a fish. I've been at this point several times during this session and I didn't have a fish. We might have a fish here because he's pulling. He's giving us a slack line. Let's see what's up. Oh, finally. I tried a million things on this session and this is the one thing that went right, a bluegill head. Oh. Oh man, and it's not even a big fish. I think it'll be a long time before I come back to this spot. I just flipped them in the deck. I bet you anything I was getting harassed this whole time by a little catfish, this being the bigger one. About like the last time I tried to fish this spot. There are gar here, but again, nothing serious. We had a couple of hits from gar on the uh, slip float. I don't know, man. I think I might go. Someone wants to fish with me at like 6 a.m. in the morning. It just came up. So if I want to do that, I got to say goodbye to you, Mr. Cat, and wrap this up. If that sunset was the only reason why I, I came out here, I have it made. But it's not the only reason why I came out here. So it was kind of crazy fishing these four rods. I got bites on all of them. Just not a lot of big catfish right in here. Not today, anyway. It was kind of like that last time I fished here. We did get something. If it wasn't for the fact that I'm going to go fish at 6 a.m. in the morning tomorrow, I would have stayed out here a lot later. But I'd rather go fishing at 6 a.m. in the morning with my friend. So we're calling it right here. Beautiful sunset. Yeah, you're right. Thanks for watching and subscribing. See you next time.